Welcome to another episode of the uh, Alpha Labs. I'm gonna open and power up some stuff I need. Okay. Let's see if I have the right script. No, this one. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Well, I've set up a test to show you the influence of the grid to an amplifier. And in this case, it's an integrated amplifier. It's made by Kinky Labs. It's a very decent amplifier. It's the new Choco Sound, to be uh, exact. Yeah, Choco Sound, Kinky Studio Design. And um, it's a decent amp. So don't, after this test, don't say, yeah, it's not a good amp. It's a, f a flawed design. No, it isn't. It's a decent amp with low feedback design. Uh, and this test is built around this AC generator and I bought this um, device to test filters, power conditioners and regenerators and stuff like that. But then I thought I can also test amplifiers uh, to see how immune they are to the grid or how the grid influences uh, an amplifier of course. Well. We all know that switch mode power supplies are pretty much immune, but they also generate noise in some cases, if the design is flawed, of course. Well, this Kinky, uh, uh, Kinky Studio amplifier um, is well built. It's pretty shielded and stuff like that. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to check if I, if I can uh, create a nice test around this device. Well, you saw it powering up. The signal path is pretty easy, actually. I uh, use the Prism D sound to put in a one kilohertz tone in the amp. Uh, the amp is uh, attached to a eight ohm dummy load and from the dummy load, it goes into the Prism again to measure the signal. Well, I need to put this on the right channel and Somewhere I thought it was around 66. Yeah. Well, you see the power going up. As you can see, it's a low feedback design. Uh, that's why there are harmonics. And I'm going to zoom in to 20 kilohertz. And you can obviously see the harmonics from the well low feedback design uh, they use. I'm going to put this to wide noise, 200 millivolts otherwise I blow up the generator instantly <laughs> or the amp I don't know um, and you can see what well, channels are pretty much the same uh, so it's a decent design I think the right channel is next to the power supply uh, because I can see from the B that's uh, the right channel it's a little bit higher just a tiny bit but it's well it's not that much well, what I'm able to do now is generate noise with either the AC generator because it can create any, any form of distortion or DC offset, stuff like that. Uh, so I thought about giving it a DC offset of one volt and see what happens. And it's already blowing and hey, there we go right around a thousand hertz to around 1500 hertz there is DC offset well it's from actually 700 hertz to 1500 hertz and you see the spikes are going up as well a little bit not in the harmonics but right here there is all sorts of stuff going on already so let's turn that down okay so you can see that only one volt of DC offset already generates uh, more noise in the power supply. And I think the power supply is leaking to the uh, signal path. That's not weird. It's an integrated amplifier, but probably the same with a power amp actually, because you amplify with your power supply. So if the power supply has noise, you amplify that noise and it will go out of the speaker terminals. So what you're seeing right here, well, I touched it, so it's not weird that it's going up. It's very sensitive. 
this is the speaker output I'm measuring. So it's not noise from the grid. This is the speaker output from this amplifier that you're seeing. So if I turn it up one volt of DC offset, this is the speaker output you're seeing. This is the influence of that one volt DC offset. Well, not everyone has trouble with DC offsets uh, or issues with DC offsets. Some people have issues with all sorts of noise. So I'm going to emulate noise from the grid. And there we are. It's even higher. And it's broader. That's not weird because it's white noise. I'm actually pumping into this AC generator and it's amplifying that white noise to with the AC uh, it's uh, generating for this amplifier so the white noise is going in it gets uh, amplified a little bit and it modulates it on the AC 50 Hertz output that it's pumping into this device and you can see it's even broader than the DC offset which makes sense of course I'm gonna switch this off because it's really having a hard time with <laughs> this amp I think it's reflecting uh, some of the noise back into the uh, socket and that's why it's heating up but it can handle it no problem at all so this is what I wanted to show you actually so that the grid the noise on the grid has a direct influence of uh, the performance of an amplifier and you can see it in the output of this amplifier and the, well the noise floor is around minus 120 dB which is pretty good for an integrated amp uh, and maybe older amplifiers don't have trouble with it but mostly the noise floor is higher so you don't see this kind of noise uh, if I put it in again uh, output, you can see that the noise isn't getting any higher than around minus 105 dB right here or well, the, the spikes here, the, these are harmonics from the 50 Hertz. It's not that most amps have that. But if the noise floor were around a minus 100 dB, and that's not really weird for an older amplifier, you will never ever see this because it will be drawn in the noise floor. But amplifiers get better and better and the noise floors go down and down so now we're actually seeing trouble like this that's at least my theory um, well I hope you liked this video uh, I just wanted to show you the influence of uh, noise on the grid on an amplifier like this and of course I've previously made a video about uh, power conditioners that can handle this kind of issue so your noise floor will be better uh, I demoed that on a Bryston plate amp and uh, well the difference with a decent power conditioner was well quite obvious actually. So I hope you like these kinds of videos and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.